This is lecture two of executory system as a continuation to the previous lecture related to human formation. Human formation includes three process filtration, reabsorption, and secretion. This lecture related specifically to reabsorption and secretion in the tube group. The filtrate entering the, entering the nephrons flow through the following tubules, proximal tubule, loop of Henle, distal tubule, a collecting tubule, and finally collecting ducts. So, there are many points we have to keep for possible students related to this process. For example, substances are selectively reabsorbed or secreted by the tubular epithelium. Reabsorption, in fact, play greater role than secretion and formation of urine. But anyhow, secretion is important when it is related to specific when it is related to release of specific uh, ion, releasing of a specific ion, for example, potassium and hydrogen, and also in releasing specific toxic materials. The resulting fluid entering the pelvis now it is the urine. Tubules, in fact, it is to separate the substances that are to be conserved in the body from those that be must be eliminated from the urine uh, from the body in the urine. Glomerular filtrate is reabsorbed in about 99%. As it passes through the tubules, it means only about one percent of the filtrate is, pass is passing within the urine. The glucose and amino acids are entirely reabsorbed. So, related to reabsorption in details, and starting with Proximal tubule. Useful substances are reabsorbed by active transport and co transport. The cell of the proximal tubule have microvilli and a large number of mitochondria in order to, to produce ATP for active transport. So important. So the important process involved in proximal tubule it is active transport transport and osmosis. You will say students. Separate pump are found for each different type of food, for example glucose, fructose and amino acid, and different ions, sodium, calcium and bicarbonate. Food are in fact completely reabsorbed and is the capability of the body is exceeded. This maximum reabsorption of glucose produces a blood concentration of about 150 mg per 100 mol. So it's high level of glucose enter the kidney after eating so much sweet. The exceed will be secreted in the urine. This means that no glucose no amino acid excreted in the urine. But when reaching or when it's this uh, when this uh, level pass the maximum absorption, this means that the glucose we will we may find level of glucose and amino acid in the urine because it exceeds the maximum absorption of the tubule. Which tubule now talking about? Proximal tubule. Anyone pump increase the concentration of ion outside the nephron and the produce low concentration inside the tubule. That's why osmotic pressure will suck water out of the tubule into the plasma surrounding the tubule is seen in the pretubular capillaries. That's why 
about 65 old water and the filtrate is reabsorbed by the proximal tubule in a process of osmosis. These reabsorbed substances are taken up by pretubular capillaries and removed from the cortex back to the blood. So in here you have to be focused that the proximal tubule is isotonic because it is, has the same osmotic pressure as the blood which is about 300 milli is more. This is because the soil and water were removed at the same rate of them from the filtrate. So what we have in here, we have to keep focus that the greater amount of, of water is reabsorbed in the proximal tubule. Why? Due to the osmotic pressure. The concentration of ion outside the nephron in here increase, that's why. This will produce low concentration inside the tubule, creating increased osmotic pressure. That's why water will suck out in the pretubular capillaries. This image shows you the most important process involved in the proximal tubule, which are active transport, co-transport, and osmosis. In fact, solute molecules such as amino acid, glucose, and fructose, as well as specific ion, sodium ion, potassium, calcium, bicarbonate, and chloride are reabsorbed by active transport. That's why we say it is rich with what? microvilli and mitochondria in order to produce ATP. As, as well as it, these transported by co-transport out of the proximal tubule into the pretubular capillaries. Absorption or transport these ions will create different osmotic pressure. That's why water will move by osmosis out of the proximal tubule into the, into the pretubular capillaries. In about 65 of the filtrate volume is reabsorbed from the proximal tubule and enter pretubular capillaries. The second part of the nephron loop of Henry. Loop of Henry consists of, as you know, descending part and ascending part. Descending deep in the medulla and an ascending loop will turn back towards the cortex. Ascending loop is also divided or subdivided into another segment, which are short section of a thin segment and a longer thick segment. In fact, medulla has high concentration of sodium chloride, NaCl, and small quantities of urea. They have leaked out of uh, leaked out of collecting ducts so that osmotic pressure increased from 300 in the proximal tubule near the cortex to about 1200 near the central bellus and this is specifically due to the vasa recta remove water from the middle leaving behind most of the salts. So this is unlike the pretubular capillaries of the cortex. So we, we, we have to keep focus on the osmotic pressure which is increased from 300 to 1,200 1, to, 1, to the reason which is the basal recta remove only water from Modena, leaving behind the salts. So, water reabsorb reabsorption uh, occurs in three states. We are talking about descending loop of Henry. You have to keep focus on that smooth descending loop of Henry has more permeable to water, but only a few or low permeability to salts. So, decreased permeability to solute while increased permeability to what to water. As the filtrate descends into the progressively higher osmotic pressure sucked out 
but smaller quantity can of salt can diffuse. This is related to the sanding loop of Henry. By the bottom of the loop of Henry, osmotic pressure filtrate increase, as we said previously, to about 1,200 mol, mol, and about 15% of the water we absorb in the descending group of honey, so the volume of filtrate now is about 20% of the original filtrate. Other thing, in the thin segment of the loop of Henley, in the ascending group of Henley, you can see the walls are not permeable to water, so it's move up, instead sucking out. It through progressively lower salt concentration. Some salts in here will diffuse out to reduce osmotic pressure, but no change its volume. So, again, in the thin segment of ascending loop of Henley, you can see that the wall is not permeable to water. Instead of that, salt will diffuse out. Thick segment of the loop of Henley of the sand ascending loop of Henley, there are sodium pump, like a proximal tube fuel. Sodium ion is pumped out while chloride flow positively, passively sorry, um, and potassium moved by what known as co-transport process. This proximally dilutes the filtrates. Water will not be removed because the walls throughout the same loop of Henley are not permeable, as we say. By the top of the loop of Henley, as the tube will re-enter the cortex again, the filtrate, the filtrate will be hypotonic, so the osmotic pressure will decrease to about one, just one hundred millisiemol. So you have to distinguish between descending loop of Henley and ascending loop of Henley. While ascending loop of Henley loses water, ascending loop of Henley, of Henley, sorry, loses salt. And the other part of the nephron, it is the distal tubule. Osmotic pressure of the filtrate now is less than surrounding the plasma. Some water will diffuse out. That's why, of course. So it's sent to osmotic pressure to what? To 300 millions more. However, but you have to keep focus on the, some uh, helpers in here to regulate the sodium potassium pump, which is aldosterone hormone, can act as in this section and also in collecting ducts to activate sodium potassium pump. So sodium move out while potassium move in. Unlike, of course, loop of Henley while in here. Collecting ducts re-enter the middle. This time, pass high through, right through the middle. Pass through the deepest layer of the middle which have very high concentration of NaCl, the maximum reabsorption of water osmosis will occur. That's why osmotic pressure of the filtrate will rise again to 1,200 mol. Many osmosis rate. So, further, 90% of the filtrate reabsorbed, leaving behind just 1% of the original filtrate will pass with the urine. However, the permeability of the water of the collecting ducts is controlled by another hormone, which is antidiuretic hormone. So, we have two hormones involved in the regulating absorption and reabsorption of the ions and osmotic pressure, which is aldosterone and antidiuretic hormones. This image to show you the differences and the osmotic pressure in the different area of the uh, kidney cortex, which is 300, while there was increase in the osmotic pressure in the outer medulla due to what? Due to the diffuse of the sodium ion and the antichloride, uh, potassium out of the uh, out yes out of the um, tubules and inner medulla. 
which is increased to about 1,000, uh, 1,200 mole. This will, will uh, affect on the reabsorption of water along the different parts of the tubules, uh, different parts of the nephrons. Proximal tubule reabsorption of water in about 65%. Because it is permeable to water, and the osmotic pressure is three three hundred, while the reabsorption of water in the same group of family ten segments is about fifteen percent. Also, the reabsorption of water you can see from this image in the distal tubule in about distal contributed tubule in about nineteen percent. Leaving behind just one percent of water will release with urine. Another process involved in urine formation it is the active transport. In fact, this process is specifically important when it is related to harmful material such as toxin in the tubule. This is released or secreted by active transport. This includes, for example, hydrogen ion. Why specifically hydrogen ion? Due to the interfering with the respiration or respiratory function and enzyme activity. When increased hydrogen ion due to the respiratory failure, example, for example, in here, this is will increase uh, hydrogen ion increase. That's why it must to be secreted by active transport by what? By the salt tubule. Other enzyme in here or other sorry ion it is potassium. Causes it must be secreted because nerve conduction need this ion in low quantity or low, or low concentration. Another thing, histamine, acts locally in the body, so should be removed. Kerosene. In addition, other, in addition to another another toxic material, for example, ammonia, which is byproduct uh, of the breakdown of amino acid, it is passively diffused into the tubules, so it is secreted. Passively into the tubules. So this this uh, this process is the third process of urine formation. Again, these process are filtration, reabsorption, and secretion. Thank you very much.